Today we're going to use cross multiplication to solve for the unknown. In the book they're going to show you three different ways you can do these problems. I'm only going to show you by way of cross multiplication because in my opinion that's the quickest and that's the easiest. So looking at 19C3 you have this fraction set equal to this fraction with one unknown. The only time you can use cross multiplication is when you have one fraction equal to one fraction. Okay, that's the only time you can use cross multiplication. Here is why we call it cross multiplication. You take this number times that number. You're going across. So you take this numerator times that denominator and you write it on one side of the equal sign. So 4 times Q is 4Q. That's on one side of the equal sign. Then you take this denominator and multiply it to that denominator. Do you see how we made an X or a cross? And we are multiplying each time we do something. So 4 times Q, 4Q, set that equal to 5 times 16. Okay, so that's what we do. So 4Q, I'm using my calculator, 5 times 16, 80. So we're solving for Q. How do we get rid of 4? Divide it. It's being multiplied, so we divide it over. Our 4's go away, and then Q would equal 20. Okay, let's look at 19C9. Again, when you have one fraction set equal to another fraction, cross multiplication, how does it work? This times this set equal to this times that. And I recommend you write these little arrows in your problems. So that means 9 times 5. So I'm just going to write it out. 9 times 5 set equal to y times 3. Well, you can write it like this, y times 3. 9 times 5, 45. When we say y times 3, we write it as 3y. Remember, when you have a number in front of a letter, that implies multiplication. We're solving for y. We need to get rid of 3. It's being multiplied, so we have to divide it away. 45 divided by 3, 15. And this, the reason I think this is easy is because it doesn't matter where your variable is. See, my letter was over here for this one. The letter is over here for this one. It doesn't really matter where your variable is. This works every time, okay? And it doesn't matter if you end up with the variable on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the equal sign. So looking at 19C10, you have a fraction set equal to a fraction. So you cross multiply. You take one numerator times the other denominator, set it equal to this denominator times the other numerator. Okay, so T times 44. We say 44T, you put the number first in the letter, and then set it equal to 4 times 33. So 44T, multiply out your 4 times 33, 132. I need to get rid of my 44. It's being multiplied, so I need to divide it to both sides. And that equals 3. Alright, let's look at some of these word problems. So, uh, 19C13. Ratios. They're going to talk about ratios in some of these word problems. Don't panic when you see the word ratios. Ratio is just a fancy word for fraction. So when it says make a ratio, you're really just making a fraction. Okay, so ratio means fraction. So here, what we're going to do in these word problems is we're going to set one fraction equal to another fraction so we can use cross multiplication to solve. Okay, that's our goal. So on a map, one inch represents eight miles. I can actually make a ratio of that. I can make a fraction of that to say one inch Oh, is represents eight miles. One inch is to eight miles on the map. So all I do is make a fraction of it. Okay? It's really good to label. Even if you want to label out here, this is inches. Down here, the denominator is miles. Okay? When we have these word problems, our goal is to set it equal to another fraction. How many miles does four inches represent? Well, how many miles? That's our unknown. That's what we don't know. But we do know four inches. When you are setting these one fraction set equal to another fraction, everything has to be in the same place. If inches is in the, the, num the numerator on this side of the equal sign, then inches has to be in the numerator on that side of the equal sign. So 
we're basically going to make another, another fraction with our new piece of information. Okay? Make a fraction with your original piece of information. That was that. Now let's make a new fraction with our another fraction with our new piece of information. If inches is in the numerator here, inches has to be in the numerator here, and miles has to be in the denominator over on the other side. So we know that four inches, so four, and then how many miles? That's what we don't know. You can use whatever letter you want, okay? So I'm just going to use M for miles. So let me rewrite this without all of our units. We have 1 over 8 equals 4 over m. Looks just like before. The main thing I want you to know is this is inches, this is miles. Inches in the numerator here, inches in the numerator there. Miles in the denominator on this side, miles in the denominator on that side. So we solved it using the same thing. You have to remember though what it is you're trying to find. We're trying to find miles. So 1 times m, 1 m equals 8 times 4. So 1 m or just m equals 32 and that represents miles. Remember when it's a word problem it's really important to have units. So 4 inches would represent 32 miles on the map. Let's look at 19 C 14. Okay remember on these that you're trying to have one fraction set equal to another fraction. Okay so two out of three birds at my feeder are chickadees. Okay, so two out of the three. Okay, well what does two represent? Two out of the three are chickadees. So that is a chickadee. What does the three represent? Two out of the total of birds. So we're going to call this T for total. So I'm going to set that equal to another fraction. There are 24 birds in all at my feeder. So 24 birds represents my total birds. So since total is in the denominator here, total has to be in the denominator over here. So 24 goes there, that represents total. And then how many birds are chickadees? That's what we're trying to find. So I can put a C here for chickadees because that's what I'm trying to find. So here, do you see how I have chickadees in the numerator here? Chickadees in the numerator here. Total in the denominator here? Total in the denominator here. So now we just use cross multiplication. 2 times 24. That'd be 48 equals 3 times C, 3C, divide both sides by 3. So 48 divided by 3 is 16, so that means there are 16 chickadees. Alright, now we're looking at 19C15. Um, again, we're going to use ratios. Fancy word for fraction, we're going to set one fraction equal to another fraction and cross multiply. For every 100 customers that came into the store, 75 bought milk. Alright, let's make a ratio out of that first sentence. And um, you need to know what each number represents. For every 100 customers, that represents the total customers. So out of a total of 100 customers, 75 bought milk. And it doesn't really matter what you put in the numerator and where you put in the denominator. It doesn't matter how you set it up as long as milk, if milk, I'm going to set it up like this. 75 bought milk out of 100 total. Okay? So as long as I put milk in the numerator here, milk has to go in the denominator over, I mean, in the numerator over here. If total's in the denominator here, then total has to be in the denominator on the other side. Okay? So, I made a ratio of fraction out of the first sentence. Now let's look at the next sentence. Only 20 customers came in yesterday. 20 customers, what does that represent? It represents the total customers. So, since total's in the denominator, total needs to go in the denominator over here. How many of them would you expect to have bought milk? We don't know. That's what we don't know, how many bought milk, so we can just put our variable there. Okay? Now we can cross multiply. That 75 times 20 equals 100 times M. Uh, 75 times 20, 1500, 100 M. Solving for M, divide by 100, divide both sides by 100. Those zeros cancel, and that would be M equals 15. So what does that represent? That represents 15 customers bought 
make milk. Doesn't really matter how you write the answer, just know so that you know that 15 customers bought milk. You need to know what 15 represents. <laughs>